What's up guys? Welcome to a live lesson. Today we've got an electric drum set here and it is the TD30, one of Roland's brand new kits. Yep. And I would like you to play a little intro song, is that cool? We're going to, yeah. I'd, I don't know if we're getting any audio from it though. Oh. Let's see if we're all set up yet. Oh, here there we it go. Is. Nice. Awesome, man. That's a cool little jam. Yeah. Guys, I hope you guys, I hope you're enjoying it so far with the Roland TD30. It's a lot of fun. And actually, uh, what, what I was just playing to, uh, if it sounded really repetitive, it was actually just a loop. So you can actually add your own little loops on a little USB stick. Oh, I know. So, we got a ton to talk about today yeah. about that. Uh, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, we've had a ton of people asking us over the last couple months, when are you going to do an acoustic, or sorry, instead of an acoustic kit, when are you going to have a lesson with an electric drum set in there? And I've been trying and trying and trying so hard to get everything to line up, and this week seems to be the week. Here we are. Um, Sean's been kind enough to use his contacts, bring in a Roland drum set for us. So thank you very much. This is a TD30, one of the newest models that they made. This is, this is their newest flagship model, yeah, this mm -hmm. replaced the TD20. Yeah, it's an incredible kit. A little expensive. Obviously, it's uh, not one that a lot of people are going to go out and grab a, the, the top of the line electronic drum set. No, this, this is this is meant for someone who uh, is most likely going to be using it live on the stage as well. A lot of guys will buy an electronic kit and it sits in the corner. But as you can see, this kit looks great from the front. So this isn't just a sit in the corner kit. This is a put it on the stage, show everyone. Very cool, very cool. So the whole idea for this lesson, guys, we're going to talk about the benefits of electronic drum set, um, tricks and tips on how to practice, uh, some things that you do want to do, some things you do not want to do. Um, but the main goal is just to give you the, the main idea that, you know, you can practice and get very far on the drums just with an electric kit. And in fact, you, for the most part, correct me if I'm wrong, but you practice on an electric kit. I do, yeah. I've been living in uh, condos, now, now a townhouse, which is pretty much the same thing. And uh, yeah, I've been practicing on an electronic kit for about five years now. Um, I'd love to practice on, a, on an acoustic kit, and I, and I do sometimes, but the bulk of my practicing is done on an electronic kit because I can practice whenever I want, and I'm, no one ever tells me to stop practicing. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great. And the chops and the skill you have is incredible. So uh, that's why when we thought about 
who to do the lesson on an electric kit, who better else but someone who practices on it regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you guys have questions about this? I know there's going to be quite a bit of questions regarding electric kits. It's going to be more of a discussion, kind of a lesson today, although we are going to talk and have a lot of playing, I hope. Yep. Um, but uh, please get your questions in, guys. If we have to go a little later, we will, because I know there's going to be tons of questions just based on the, the forums and the responses that we've got just saying we're doing a lesson on this. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a ton of questions. That being said, Sean, you want to just dive right on in? I mean... First off, the basic benefits to an electric and acoustic yeah. kit. So. Ba basic benefits, uh, electronic versus acoustic. I mean, number one, obviously, there's a volume knob. You can turn the volume down, and you can even just use headphones. So you don't need to have uh, sound ever, really, except for just the sound of us hitting the pads. Um, now, mesh, obviously, is going to be quieter than rubber. Um, as you can kind of notice with an electronic kit when you're hitting the cymbals, which are rubber, they're going to be a little bit louder than the mesh, which absorbs the impact a little bit more. Um, but other than that, they're really, really quiet, and it's a great practice tool, um, and it's so much more interesting than just sitting with, a, with an actual practice pad, because there's no actual sound, there's no, there's no real feel of, you know, playing drums, it just feels like you're, you know, practicing rudiments on, on a book, right? So. Um, Electronic drums are, are really, really good to kind of inspire you to practice a little bit more. That's what I've always found anyway. Um, Do you want to just quickly show, I mean, I'm sure most people have already heard it without, but uh, can we turn the volume down on this and just have the mic from your lapel so we can hear what it sounds like? Yeah, let's Because uh, there let's is some see. sort of volume to it. I don't want to mess with Victor's volume settings here. Um, Audio Guru, am I already throwing you for a loop? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Take, Take it, it down there. Out. Just play. Bring it in and out, Victor, if you can. That'd be great so you can kind of hear the difference. And we're going to leave these mics on so you guys yeah. can hear. Because with mesh heads, it's quieter than, than, than rubber pads. Definitely. And quieter. I know a lot of people, uh, I used to have an electric kit where my landlords could hear it. And it was the worst. So, I mean, maybe mesh is the way to go. But just play it a little bit so you can see here the volume. Still hear the volume. Here we go. Now, one thing you might have noticed is the kick sounds a little bit loud, but that's actually the, the pedal's bottoming out. Someone's modified this pedal. I think Jared modified it a little bit. And so it's actually bottoming out. It's normally not that loud. Cool, cool. Yeah. Now, uh, a couple people in the chat are also first asking, and we'll get all this kind of stuff out of the way. How much does this kit run? How much does the module itself run? And does this do the same kind of thing that like a cheaper $900 kit would do? Okay, well, on to the second question first. No, it doesn't do... With, it, it'll do more than what the $900 kit does. Mm -hmm. um, so this kit, as it is now, I'm not sure what the uh, American street price is, but in Canada it goes for about eight, eight grand. So it's going to be pretty similar in, in the States. The brain itself, um, its predecessor, the TD20, was going for about 25 so I think this one's probably going for more like 28 or 29 for the brain. Okay. Yeah. Cool. But the, the brain is, th this is the powerhouse. I mean, th these are really nice pads. But all of the calculations, and I say calculations because of the modeling technology, everything takes place in here. This is, this is a little miniature computer. And uh, it's calculating where on the head you're hitting, and so what sound it should reproduce. It's calculating, uh, for example, on the cymbals. Um, since I'm hitting it on the edge, it's saying, okay, I'm going to give it an edge hit. But if I do this, it says, oh, He's doing a swell, I better make it sound more like a swell. So it's actually, it's behavior modeling. It's actually, uh, uh, you know, making all these complex little calculations in real time to kind of create a uh, more real, realistic uh, drumming experience. It's cool. Pretty cool. Cool. Sorry to, to interrupt, I just had a lot of questions about that pop up, so I'll let you continue. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's that right there. Um, where were we? Talking about different sounds, the big <laughs> basic benefits, and uh, like if you're going to buy an electric drum set, do you go and buy, uh, um, uh, or if you're going to go buy a drum set, do you choose an electric one over an acoustic one? That's that's a very common question, and my answer is both. Um, you have an electronic, or you have an electric guitar, you have an acoustic guitar. Different situations, both useful. Same with drums. Uh, an electronic drum set is going to let you practice a lot more. It's going to let you have a whole lot more sounds. Like this thing's got like like I think 80 
80 uh, preset kits built into it, and then plus looping and, and all, all sorts of things like that, which you wouldn't get with an, with an acoustic kit unless you added electronics to it. So they're two different beasts. That's why um, it's always interesting to me when people will say, like, I can't play on electronic kits. Like, you know, I, I, I just can't do it. It's not the real thing. Exactly. It's not the real thing. It's not really meant to be the real thing. It's meant to give you kind of a similar experience, but it's kind of like uh, a wrench versus a whole toolbox. Um, you're you're going to be able to do what you can do with the wrench, but it's going to be different, and you're going to be able to do a whole lot more things with it at the same time. Cool. Yeah. Go so um, this is such a broad subject. I'm just trying to think of where we are. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about the little going. different sounds and, and, and all that because we have a whole, like I said, a whole PDF here yeah. of, uh, of different things to talk about. Uh, mesh versus rubber pads, built-in metronome, many different sounds, customizable. Um, so, yeah, why don't you why, just... Why don't you give me that list? <laughs> yeah, sure. There you go, buddy. Um, yeah, so um, uh, any electronic kit is going to have a lot of different sounds. That's, that's one of its really, really strong points. Some of them um, in the lower price ranges of, you know, $700 to $1,000 are going to be like 25 to 50 kits, and then the higher end ones are gonna be 50 to 100 kits. This one has, let me just scroll through it really really quickly, but I think I said it was 80, and I think it is 80. 80, and then we have 20 user kits. So basically, you can have, there, there's 80 different preset sets, and then you can also combine those for 20 more, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna cycle through a bunch of different sounds so you can kind of get the picture um, if you've never done this before at a music store. You'd never really have access to a kit that sounds like that normally. That's why it's kind of cool to have an electronic totally, set. Totally, yeah, yeah. Or there's some melodic kits on here. Or Jambe, World Percussion. <laughs> kind of funky. Uh, brushes, which you can actually use brushes on this. Just a, a lot of fun. What was that one called? V Vision, is it? Vision. Uh -huh. So again, you couldn't be able to, you, you couldn't do that with an acoustic kit. And so this isn't a, an acoustic kit and it's not meant to replace it. It's just a whole new set of tools. Again, we've got tons of things. Like you can start patterns. So you can do a lot of different things. Um, so that's, you know, you have a lot of different sounds, you have a lot of different, uh, usually play along songs too. So if we dig into the, uh, the patterns on here, and any uh, electronic kit generally, is, with the, with the uh, exception of a few, is gonna have 20 to 40 to 50 to 60 uh, built in play along songs. So this one's got a ton. Some of them are actually associated with the, uh, the kits that trigger sounds, but let's, and the one thing that's um, so nice about, about having built-in playalongs with uh, uh, any kind of electric kit, you can change the tempo um, yeah. of, of, of the songs that you're playing. So if you're really trying to learn, I know just last week we did a whole week on Latin drumming, and if you're trying to learn some Latin chops or you're trying to learn a samba or a bossa nova, you actually speed it up and slow it down, and you have access exactly. to practice that within a style. And they're all very genre-specific too, so if, mm -hmm. if you want to get better at your, your shuffle or whatever, right? Um, pop 16. Let's try that. That was the wrong kit for the song. Let me just change the kit back. Certain kits have triggers right when you hit the cymbal, and that one actually brought in a different, completely different play along, <laughs> play -along loop to it. Don't do that. <laughs> um, do this, so this is better. There we go. 
again, that's just a, uh, another example of a loop. So if you want to get good at, I think this is supposed to be like 16-year-old pop music. So if you if you wanna if you wanna go where the money is and uh, and play some pop, um, find a loop and practice it to your heart's content. Shuffle pop. Now we also have uh, built-in metronome on here, which is to me is one mm -hmm. of, I think one of the smartest features. Uh, depending on what kit you have too, there's also uh, I, I know us the, the new Rollins per, per se. I'm not gonna uh, say all of them have it because I know all of them don't. But there's a way you can plug it into your USB, and you can actually plug it into your computer and see exactly where your notes are falling, um, and uh, see where you're where you're having troubles with, see where your your faults are, and all that kind of stuff. But even just having a built-in metronome um, uh, as it is, I mean it's a hassle for for a lot of drummers when they're at a kit to get a metronome that'll bleed through their ears enough yeah. so they can hear it. Yeah. Um, so having it on an electric kit, I mean, it's, it's brilliant. And, and a metronome that's powerful enough that you can do presets. Um, some of the other kits, I'm not sure if this one has it. Um, th this is a pretty big brand and I haven't totally um, delved into everything that it has to offer, but um, I know the, the TD-15 and the TD-11 um, in specific actually have coaching functions. So it'll actually give you a visual cue so you can watch to see if you're a little bit behind the beat, with the beat, ahead of the beat, and it'll grade you. So it's a really great way to, again, it's a great practice tool, and it's a great way to sort of uh, gauge how you're improving, and if you're improving, or maybe if you're not improving and you need to start. So, um, and actually, yeah, the, the, we'll, we'll go to the next song, and we will uh, add a metronome into it, since it's got the built-in metronome. So if I play it. There it is. Callum Reese is angry, let you know. <laughs> that voice is hilarious. But it actually comes in handy if you're playing something like Odd Time Signature and you're like, I'm not sure where the one is and where the seven ends. Um, so there, he, here's our metronome. Um, again, almost every electronic kit is going to have one this in depth. So you can change your time signature. This one's 4-4. Four, four. Let's try 5-4. One, two, three, <laughs> change the voice, four, though. five, one. There you go, a nice, a nice beep. And we change it to eighth notes. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, etc. Right? So basically any electronic kit you buy, it's gonna have that built in. And it's a great, great practice function. One of the questions that we get a lot when people are, are deciding what pack to get, or you know, if they're just starting on the drums, they say, oh, you know, well, I notice on Drumio or I notice on drumming system, you guys use an uh, acoustic kit, uh, but I only have an electric kit. Is that gonna work for me? Obviously it's going to, but um, uh, what do you have to say about that? People who are concerned that they might not be able to pick up the lessons the same being on an electric kit to it's, an acoustic. It's actually, I, I work at a music store, so it's a really common question. People will say like, um, I'm, I, I think that I need to get an electronic drum set, but is it going to be the same as an acoustic kit? And the coordination is identical. Everything that you're playing, as long as you have the kit set up comfortably and, and you know, properly, is going to be the same. Um, the only thing you have to take into consideration is, are you playing the same way you play on an acoustic kit? Are you still, are you still trying to aim for you know, the center of the head? I, I find that actually electronic drums are really good for your aim too, because the pads are smaller. So you get used to hitting at a smaller surface, whereas some guys, um, especially new, new players, you have, you have such big surfaces to hit on an acoustic kit, and you can tell because the entire head is just totally ravaged the whole way around. Mm -hmm. um, when, when you see a really experienced player, it's usually like just like little, little uh, sections. And so an acoustic kit actually really helps with your accuracy. Um, the feel is definitely different. You've got uh, mesh, as we've got here, and you've got the rubber pads. Um, now, I, f I find that uh, rubber doesn't feel real, mesh doesn't feel real. They're, they're, they're different. I've, I like the, the feel of mesh a little bit more because you can tighten it or loosen it. So you can have your high toms a little bit tighter, you can have your floor toms a little looser. You don't want to develop some killer floor tom chops on an electronic kit and then get onto an acoustic kit and you just can't do it because you had them tuned as high as snare drums before. So you definitely want to look out for uh, uh, overdeveloping certain abilities just on the electronic kit. 
Uh, same with the snare. Like you, you want the snare to feel like a snare drum. Um, and that's one thing actually that you don't get with the rubber pads is they have the same feel the whole way around, which I find tend to be a little bit more forgiving than on an acoustic kit where it absorbs some of your performance. On the rubber pads, it just bounces right back at you. Um, so it's, it's a great practice tool, but nothing replaces um, learning the chops on an acoustic kit as well. That's what I find. Um, I have had some guys, um, usually older guys, um, comment saying that they started getting severe wrist pain from uh, playing on rubber pads too much. Now, I'm not sure if that's just uh, you know something that kind of comes with age um, or arthritis or something like that, but it is, it is something to be to be wary of. Like when, when you're playing on on an acoustic kit too, like you can do the same thing yourself on an acoustic kit. Like play until you <laughs> if you're feeling pain, stop playing, adjust your technique, you know, as such. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, neither are going to be real. They're going to be slightly different. And my my kit at home actually has a, a mesh snare. And then rubber toms, and I think my playing has developed just fine. Yeah, well, obviously it sounds great when you play on the acoustic. It doesn't sound like you're only an electric kit player at all. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> um, let's talk about these bottom few here. I mean, you got built-in playalongs, uh, mixing. One one thing that I wanted to really get into, and one thing I don't know if anybody utilizes a lot of, but with uh, electric kits, you can plug in your own audio. Yeah. And all you need to do with um, uh, some of the students from Drumio, they actually even output their audio from the live lessons right into there, so they can listen, play along, and practice right along with the lesson. Is like you know, with the drumming system, with any kind of product you have. Um, but uh, why don't you give us some? some well, obviously, it's pretty simple with the mixing and all that. But uh, yeah. So. Um, every kit, I shouldn't say every kit, but every kit that you would find in a store these days is going to have an auxiliary or, or a mix in, which is going to be either a quarter inch or a stereo mini, so an eighth inch in. Mm -hmm. um, but these days, uh, the music world is finally catching up to technology, and you can now use USB sticks. So a couple of the tracks I was, I was messing around with and some more that we'll play along to um, are actually on the USB stick, and you just plug it in. And this is coming to a lot of kits these days. And then you can actually just access your tracks like it, like kind of like a built-in MP3 player sort of thing. Um, and then you can obviously um, set the mix. Like since this is the big flagship kit, we've actually got a, a built-in mixer with faders right on the front, which makes it really, really easy on the fly to adjust. But if you don't have that, um, like my TD9 at home, you've still got built-in functions on the inside where you go scroll through the menu and put the kit volume up and put the track volume down or vice versa, whatever you like. But it's really, really great for trying to learn to practice to, to songs and stuff where you can actually have a cohesive mix all together rather than what some guys will do. Or you know, you're on your acoustic kit and you've got some giant tower speakers just blasting at you and you're, by the time you've actually learned how to play the whole Green Day song, your ears are bleeding. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so so this is, it's just a really easy way to mix it all together. I've also seen some guys, they'll have two sets of headphones, they have the one, like the in-ears with, uh, with the song playing, and then they have their other big over-ear ones with, with the kit, but that's really uncomfortable. It's just so much sound blasting at you. So the mixer is just really, really handy. Of course, you also have your your uh, metronome volume that you can raise and lower, and sometimes ambience too. This one's got a bunch of built-in uh, effects, uh, some EQ, some room mics, and some reverb and echo and stuff like that. But it's really handy. And then you also have, on almost every kit, the ability to record yourself. So you can play, listen back, and see how you did, which is a great function. Um, I, f I found that I didn't really start improving until I started hearing how I was playing, because you know, when you start out, you're like, yeah, I'm awesome. This is great. And you play, and you're like, okay, that was... Or, or you, you listen back to the recording, you're like, that was good. But what the heck happened there? I didn't even notice that I did that. Yeah. And so now you know to watch for it. Oh, I noticed that I did it. I am gonna, I'm going to correct, correct it for next time. And you do, and you get better. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Recording is huge. Um, I think on this one... Uh, let's try it on this one. Sure. I was going to say, I want to hear this kit more. I want you to play some more on this because it it's just so, so much good. to talk about. When you're when you're sitting here beside the kit, it's kind of weird because usually you feel the bass drum and you feel the snare going on, but totally. you, you can't feel it anymore. You just hear it, right? So it's kind of weird. Uh, but uh, you're gonna record something. Let's record something. Perfect. And it's gonna record once I hit the pads. Let's listen to it. Yeah, 
yeah, so uh, a few things I would have done better. Um, try it again, you know, and so on and so forth. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. Um, you can also... Um, you can actually record along to some of the, the play-along tracks, I think. Let's leave that for now, though. Sure. Play along to a track right now, any play-along song, and as you go through it, have it set up on the kit, and I'm going to cycle through some of the presets. I want to hear yes. how it changes. Okay. Um, but Because I, I just want to hear this kit, and then show how, because you're going to play the similar so or similar fill, similar beats that you'd play uh, normally on, on, on an acoustic kit, uh, but this is going to be really cool. Let's find a good track to play along to. Here we go. Nope. Anyone to work? As long as it's not one of your crazy... It has to feel good. It has here to feel go. good. 4-4 groove. All right, here we go. Never are. go wrong with that. Yeah. Too fun. It's yeah, no fun. kidding. Okay, uh, we have a ton of questions, and I know we have a lot more to talk about here too, so I'll let you do that, and we'll get to the questions at the end. we got about 30. <laughs> got already? Yeah, keep, so <laughs> keep going there. Wow. Um, okay, one thing that's kind of a cool function about electronic kits is you can change the sensitivity of the pads. Um, so let me demonstrate. Snares at a sensitivity of 7. It's a really good sensitivity, I wouldn't change it, but just in case you want to. Let's crank it. So it's, it's basically feeding everything all the time. You're not getting any, any subtleties, no matter where you go in the head. That's, that's great if you want to have more of a mechanical, electronic, industrial sound. There's definitely a time and a place for any of that. Mm -hmm. And you have the opportunity to. But we'd put that more back down to seven. Um, I find that that comes more into play with, um, with aggressive styles of music where you want the kick to just be punching the whole time. So this is, uh, I'm gonna go back to a normal kit first. Go back to our good studio kit. Where were we here? There we go. So right now that's at a sensitivity of eight. If we put that all the way to the top, there's no dynamics, it's just in your face the whole time. I wouldn't recommend that if you're practicing trying to get tighter at the double bass because that's actually gonna create the illusion that you're a more powerful player than you are. Mm -hmm. If you really wanna hear how you're playing, Use the sensitivity tool to your benefit and have, have it pretty low, and then that's really going to force you to work on your power. Ah, oh, I see, yep. So it, it goes both ways. So it was set at 8 originally, so we'll just leave it at that. Same goes for all the all the toms, the cymbals. I don't know why you would ever mess with the with the sensitivity on a cymbal unless you really just want something, again, really electronic or or kind of processed feeling. Yeah. Again, most kits are going to have um, uh, ambience. Now, Victor, our audio guru, has already got some ambience on here. I'm just gonna. Is is it okay if I roll it in real quick? I 
guys oh. notice that? Yeah. Really just opens it up. So if you really want that Brian Adams <laughs> sound. And then you can also edit that on the fly, so. It's really good if you're going for a specific sound. Um, and uh, one reason you would actually want to do that, and one reason why this is really helpful, it's gone, um, is using the output to record. Um, this kit, again, this is the flagship, so it's got direct outs for all the drums. Um, that's not normal. What you're normally going to get is just a stereo out, so a left and a right. So you can actually do your mix in here, add a little bit of ambience, so a little bit of reverb, um, mess with the EQ a little bit, maybe some compression. And you actually have a pretty sweet sounding drum mix, and you can record it directly into whatever you're using, you know, Pro Tools with a little M-Box or, or, or what have you. So that's, again, a huge benefit of an electronic kit that you're not going to get with an acoustic. With an acoustic kit, you're going to need to drop, you know, a minimum three to four hundred dollars for a cheap mic set, plus another hundred, hundred fifty bucks for cables, and then, and then you're actually finally recording. With this, just out right away, and you're good to go. Cool. And again, recording is the way you get better, and also practicing and lessons and you know, great teachers and stuff like that. But. What about the size of the toms? I know you're saying you can t you can adjust the, the tension of the or the um, feedback, I guess, of each uh, cymbal and mesh head. But can you change the actual size of the toms and all that? We can edit the drums. This one you can do it a lot more. But with your average electronic drum set, you can still edit them. So let's let's try to mess with this kit a little bit. Let's see instrument. There you are. Let's say we want a different sounding snare drum. This is a little bit maybe too bitey. Let's go for something a little bit more dull. That's a maple. That's not what we want. That's a, that's a superphonic. There, so a little bit more uh, uh, dry, flat sounding. So that's where we are, but now we can edit that. So that, that is a mahogany snare drum. Let's change how deep it is. Right now it's set to five and a half inches deep. Now this is, this is getting a little bit more in depth. Usually you can just change the tone. This is actually changing the depth, which is pretty in depth, no pun intended. So here, eight inches for your 80s power ballad. You notice it's a very slight change in the timber. Go up. So that we're back at five and a half. We can change the head type. Or sorry, the head, uh, yeah, head type. I didn't know you could even do that too, that's crazy. You can, and actually this one I guess is, uh, is fixed. So this one you can't, most of them you can. So we, we can mess with the head tuning on this though. You can crank it as far as you want, really. Don't you wish you could tune your acoustic drums that easily? Yeah. Like, seriously. One spin. <laughs> Change the muffling. Right now it's got donuts on it. Right now it's open. See it? A little more overtone. The strainer is set to loose and it's a fixed position so you actually can't change it. You can change the mic position. That's so insane. It's, it's so in-depth. Your, your average electronic drum set is going to have uh, tuning up and down and uh, maybe muffling. You're not going to have all that extra insane stuff that this adds, but it's, it's pretty cool to have if you Got the uh, the honkin' mamma jamma drum set. Means we'll switch back to the original stainless. Was that it? Yes, that was it. Cool.
I have a feeling we have lots of questions. We do. Um, one thing I wanted to ask when we have this in our points there, to, to talk about how to get used to an electric kit versus acoustic. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of exercise that you do? Because you play live with an acoustic, if I'm not mistaken. I do. Yeah. Uh, and when you go home to practice, is there any rituals or is there any practice exercises that you do when going back and forth to maybe get yourself more used to it? Or There's no, there's no real uh, specific things you do. You just need to be aware of how you play on the different feel and kind of... Uh, compensate for that. So, um, on on my kit at home, where I've got the, the 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 rubber toms, I just need to remember that there's a lot more bounce from the rubber toms, and so whatever I'm doing on there is going to be a little bit easier than when I take it back to my kit at home. And so you want to you want to keep that in consideration. There's no real actual specific rituals or, or specific uh, exercises per se. I could say you do, except for just just to, to use it for what it is, which is a great practice tool, and in you know, a kit like this, in this case, a great performance tool too, but a great practice tool just to um, learn your beats, practice whenever you can, and uh, take advantage of all the, the sweet, sweet stuff that are, that's packed into the, uh, the module here. Cool. Well, let's get to some questions. Um, I will say that I saw the Trans-Siberian Orchestra live, and uh, the drummer um, plays on a electronic kit. And at the time, it was a TD-30, or 20 at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, it was the first big stadium gig show. Like, you're doing a stadium gig event, and he's playing on an electric kit. Yeah. Really cool, though. It sounded great. Um, but uh, let's get some questions here. Okay, so... Starting from the very top, because you guys, this whole idea of, for this lesson is just to talk about how, you know the differences between the two, the benefits of an electric drum set. I think they're great to have, uh, and this whole week we're going to do each lesson on this TD30. Uh, so it's going to be a week of lessons, and it's going to be no different than an acoustic kit, and we're just doing that to show you guys that anybody who has an electric kit, you can still learn. And It's all fact, the same. It's all the same, and I have some students on there, I know there's some students on there that have practice pad kits as well, and obviously there's no sound coming out of those, but the constant concepts that you're practicing, exercises and beats that you're doing, they're all the same, you know? Uh, let's start from the very top. Bones says, uh, last Monday's lesson on Latin drumming essentials, I missed it and it's not in the library. That was put in the library a while ago, it's actually lesson number 127, so check in there and see if it's in there. If not, email me because I saw it in there just a little while ago. Um, Evil Timmy says, this is actually a big one, so I'll... I'll, I'll Paraphrase this one in a bit. Until then, Noodle says, Hey, Sean, I wasn't sure if the electric kits had much rebound. How do you get the feel of like the heel toe or the slide technique on the bass drum with that mesh uh, pad? Well, again, with this mesh pad, you can tighten it or loosen it to feel pretty similar to an acoustic uh, bass drum. It's not going to feel exactly the same. And um, when I first played on a, uh, a mesh bass drum, it really, really messed with me because I find it is fairly bouncy, but you can just... Once I realize you can just loosen it, um, you should be able to more or less pull off the same technique on it. It's just it's just a, a matter of um, slightly altering your playing style, but it's it's going to be mainly actually um, tightening or loosening the head. Cool. Until it feels real. Um, Evil Timmy, I've, I paraphrase this question. He basically, he's exclusively practicing and playing on a V drum set. He wants to know: Is there anything that he should know um, to avoid developing any bad habits when going back and forth between the two? We kind of talked about that a little bit, but yeah, just make sure that the uh, like it, is it is it mesh or rubber? If it's rubber, make sure that the uh, the uh, kit isn't doing all the rebound work for you because if you're doing rebound on an acoustic kit, uh, you're going to be working a lot harder for it. Um, so, so just be aware of that, um, as well as if you're using a mesh kit, um, try to have them tuned as realistically as possible so when you jump on the acoustic kit, it's not such a drastic change. Um, yeah, uh, uh, other than that, um, also what we talked about with, with sensitivity, try to, stay, st st I can't talk. try to stay away from the practice of um, setting up your trigger sensitivity so that it makes life easier for you. You don't really want that. You want it to, to be as realistic as possible or sometimes even as challenging as possible to make you a better player. Um, other thing you could want to make sure is when you're setting up your electric kit, if you can, try and set it up as ex identical to your acoustic kit. Yeah. If that's possible. I know with the, the racking system on this one, you obviously can. Uh, I've played on some Yamaha uh, basic model kits or TD6, um, which you just can't bring the toms high enough or move them apart. But do the best you can right. to set up so it mirrors right. the setup of your acoustic kit. Even if it looks silly. So I've seen some electric kits that look silly set up so far apart because the pads are so small. But if that's where you're going to be hitting on your acoustic, then why not that's set a, it up like that? That's a great point. Yeah, you, you don't want to feel 
completely out of place on an acoustic kit because you're used to practicing with everything that's like all jammed together because mm -hmm. it's electronic. Exactly. He also asks, Evil Timmy says, can you speak of the experience with the different roll and bass drum options slash hardware? Wondering how much better the more expensive options are. And I've seen that pad, obviously now that's the biggest one I've seen, but I've also seen ones that actually are attached to the pedal that um, uh, actually have the pedal that go down that's all the, the way to the bottom. That's the KD7. I don't know if you could even get that one anymore, but that one's pretty sweet for like just triggering sounds and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so this is the KD, they, they've changed the name, but th this is the 14 inch. There's also a 12 inch and I don't know if they're still doing the 10 inch, um, but the, the, the 12 inch was the one that came with the TD20 and I liked it, but I found that there was a bunch of moving parts on it and it tended, tended to rattle unless you were always kind of tightening it. This one is really, really great. It's all just totally one unit and hasn't rattled once, which is awesome. You also have the KD9, which is the replacement to the rubber pad. It's actually, it's, it's the small black one. And uh, it's actually a, a foam pad with sort of a synthetic fiber type material on top of it, which feels so much better than just the, the old rubber pad. It actually has a little bit of give, sort of like, sort of like this one does. And uh, again, that, that's also a great unit. It's all, all one piece uh, versus the other one, which was held together by screws and would eventually rattle. So they've definitely um, upped their game with, with the pads. And if you're getting something current, you're, you're not really going to go wrong. It just depends on, on the, the feel that you like and the budget you're working with. Cool. Tinkata says, the question of an e-kit just came up last week for our church. What would you recommend as a minimum in what to look for and as a kit um, used at least once a week to play along with a small group? Um, well, I think if you're using it for church, uh, my experiences with, with church and church sound is you want the stage volume to be as low as possible. So it would be good to try to get at least some kit with mesh pads because that's going to be a lot quieter than the than the a stick on a rubber sound. Mm -hmm. You're still going to get that on the cymbals, but they're not so rigid. They, they have some give, and so they don't have that sort of hard crack that the, uh, that the rubber pads have. Um, so you definitely want something with mesh, and if possible, um, you want direct outs because then the soundman has absolute control over the kit like you would an acoustic kit. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this kit, actually, the, the, the TD30, this is the TD30 KV. Um, they also offer it in the... Uh, in, in a light model, I think it's just the TD30K. So it's the same brain with all of all the features, but it's just a downgraded pad set. Still all mesh, but it's, uh, it's I think, uh, yeah, somewhere around, I think we talked about it, like somewhere around like $4,800 $4, rather than eight grand. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's also a good option for, for you know, the church. Yeah, my church, uh, or one of the churches I played for way back when had a TD6, and that was too, too low, I think, for, for it. it had rubber pads, the brain didn't have as much functionality to it, um, and then the congregation heard the, heard the rubber pads more than they yeah. heard the drums. You don't want you don't want that. Yeah, no, not at all. Scott A says, this will probably be already answered, the hot spot in the center of the Roland V drums. Um, I just aim slightly high in the center and hope it's not too bad of a habit to get into. What are your thoughts on that? Slightly high in the center, I guess we're talking about centers here and you're playing... Yeah, I guess he's um, talking about the hot spot of the drum. You talked about also aiming well and yeah. Um, well, here's the thing with that: um, if you know that you're doing it, there's nothing really stopping you from correcting it. Um, as as with any acoustic drum, it's still going to sound the best right in that sweet spot in 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 the center. And um, so, if you're aware of it, that's already half the battle. So now you just need to really. It's it's not necessarily a terrible terrible habit. There are much worse ones out there. But if you know you're doing it, why and if not, you're consistent, why not right? If you're consistent, if you're consistent, just move the drum. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to be hitting the center. Yeah, really. Uh, well, that was one of the feedback we gave one of that one of our students too. Uh, sent a bit of a video, and they were hitting a little bit too far away from the drum. All we needed to do is move the drum a little bit back. Move the drum, or move your seat, and problem yep. solved. Yeah. Tom O'Connell says, uh, "Is it possible to use the rack that comes with electric drums to mount acoustic toms or cymbals on there?" That's um, a good question. Looking at this, this looks identical to the the size of the. Uh, the Gibraltar racks and the DW racks, so yeah, you could. Um, it's a solid metal too. It's not. It's not like a plastic um, rack, so it'll no, be it's, able to support it's, it. it it's like. tough. It's 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 literally probably the same stuff. Um, the only thing is, I don't know what the price point is like for just buying the rack itself. It might not be too cost effective, but you definitely can. Yeah. Cool. Phoenix127 says, I had a TD9 with mesh heads and upgraded with the TD15 model, or sorry, module. It's fantastic uh, for the bands I play with, so much more responsive. Yeah, it'll do a lot because I, I believe the, uh, the new models now, the 15 and the 30, both come with supernatural. Supernatural behavioral sound modeling. 
Yes, and Willie Mung says, I'm curious about the supernatural sound processing, and can you really hear the difference? Also, what is the impact of position triggering when you're playing? Let's talk about the supernatural feel. Do you notice a difference? Already? Hu hugely. Um, I, it's, it's all over the drums, but um, I first noticed it. Uh, we got a TD-15 in, uh, it was the first one in Canada, and it, it arrived at my store, and I set it up right away like a little boy Christmas morning. And... Um, I, I noticed it right off the bat on the cymbals. The, the cymbals, they, they don't just spit out the same sample as fast as you play it, like they actually start to swell, right? Like... So depending on the way that you're playing, it's actually going to be uh, calculating different sounds, different ways, and... Uh, I find that the cymbals just sound more rich because they're not like stacking the same sound over top of each other, which, I, which starts to sound thin after a while. Mm -hmm. It becomes an actual one big kind of cymbal sound. So you definitely notice that on the cymbals uh, on the TD-30 as well as the TD-15 and uh, a little bit on the TD-11. Um, with the snare, the snare's pretty cool. It's pretty sensitive, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit in the center and I'm gonna move out to the outside and you're, you're gonna notice it's gonna totally change. That's that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that is. Play us just some beats and grooves with some texture eye stuff so we can hear how it sounds. Let's do it. So even with the toms, you can tell like you're hitting by the rim versus in the, yeah. the center. So it, it's pretty cool. You can be really expressive. That wasn't a very good example because, you know, on, on the fly, but you can be really, really expressive. Well, we have the TD-20 uh, in the other room there, and already like just practicing on that compared to this, there's no real comparison. It, it seems like it's quite a big difference. But anyway, yeah. uh, there's also lots of other different kits too. There's the Elisis out there. There's the um, Box 2. I don't know if you've heard about that one. Um, two Box? Two Box, sorry. Yeah. And there's also the, um, well, there's also Yamaha makes a couple different kinds of leases. Yep. Uh, so there's a lot of different uh, options out there for you, and all of them make higher end and lower end models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some pretty, pretty nice kits out there. Simon Stewart says, hey, Dave and Sean. Um, happy anniversary to Sean, by the way. <laughs> Apparently, you. he remembers. I didn't even know that. Sorry. You remember. Yeah, happy, I have the Roland TD8 module with uh, using a TD20 drum mesh heads and the TD or the KD120. I don't know those model numbers. KD120, sure that's, that's the 12-inch mesh pad, I think, for the okay. kit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, he's, um, and it's best kit for practicing at night. Have you ever tried using the Roland Friend Dram with the TD30 kit? It, it's an awesome tool for creating new ideas, play-alongs on your own songs. I haven't used that yet. Um, I've, I've seen it demoed a few times, and that that is pretty sweet, actually. Yeah, Friend Jam, you can uh, um, play along the songs and kind of like grade your score against other people in the world and your friends, and it's, it's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Davis says, did you look at into the other kits or just the TD-30 um, on also the Alesis DM-10, any count? Um, I'm pretty sure you meant, have you tried any other kits? And I've tried a, a lot of them. Um, actually, Yamaha has a really cool, the, the, new, the new pads on Yamaha's are, are yeah. nice and... Yeah, Yamaha's new kits are, are pretty sweet. They've kind of got that silicon pad. The, the one thing that uh, 
um, I find makes them not quite an equal to a mesh pad is that you, you can't tune them. You can't change the feel. They're, they're pretty much just as is, whereas a mesh pad, you can tighten it or loosen it. But again, a uh, mesh pad doesn't feel like the real thing. Silicon pad, that Yamaha, does, doesn't feel like the real thing. So whatever feels best for you mm -hmm. is, is the one that you should get. And you can actually adjust the tension of those with the drum key, almost with, like a real With the drum key, yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Um, Vander Waden says, do you use different drumsticks on a V kit versus an acoustic kit? Very good question. Very common question too. Um, there's no need to really, um, except for uh, size-wise. Like if, if you're a, a 2B player, um, use 2Bs, you're going to feel more comfortable. Just make sure you're not like smashing the crap out of your drums. Um, nylon tip versus wood tip, it's not going to make any difference sound-wise like it normally would on, on an acoustic kit. It's just the, the rebound is going to be slightly different. But I find that's not really a necessary thing that you need to do. If, if you like nylon sticks or nylon tip sticks, use them on the kit. If you like wood tip sticks, use them on the kit. But it's mm -hmm. not really going to be making any sort of profound change in the sound or your playing. What if you have uh, sticks that you're using on your acoustic kit that you've chopped up quite a bit from rim shots and from cymbals? Mm -hmm. Do you want to use those on an electric kit? Because I know sometimes people just grab the first pair of stick from their bag. Yeah. Um, if they feel good, sure. But is there any risk of the splinters coming off and poking through the mat? That's my fear, uh. especially when I have a couple frays coming off and I go to play an electric kit. I always get so scared that it's going to poke right into the mesh. Never happened to me. I'm sure you know, there's that one freak time where it's going to happen, but on my five years of playing on my electronic kits, it never happened. It's never happened, eh? No. Good. Good to know. Uh, Jason says, uh, this is an awesome kit, but it's top of the line, so it should be awesome. What, <laughs> and that's a good point, what should be a small, effective V kit for someone who just wants to use it more for a practice tool, not for an instrument? It depends on your budget, but if, if, just a, if you're looking at just a practice tool, um, Yamaha and Roland both have um, a lower budget entry level kits. Yamaha's DT Explorer comes in at... 700 bucks, mm -hmm. roughly, um, but you just get the same rubber pad for the hi-hat and the snare and all the tom. So if you find that that's really not good enough, then you can move up to the Roland TD-11, which I think they're going for a grand now. You get a mesh snare, you get a hi-hat pad. It's not going to be open and closed like this, but you get a hi-hat pad, and then you get the rubber toms, and uh, yeah, that starts at a grand. And you can upgrade that to all mesh for, I think, $15.99. $15.99, $16.99, somewhere around there. Um, so that's probably what you want to be looking at. Or um, you could even catch some of the discontinued TD4s. They're usually getting blown out or getting sold to use on Craigslist for, for quite a bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pearl makes one called the E-Pro Kit. It's uh, yeah. one that's a mixture of acoustic and it's a hybrid, I guess you'd it's say. It's a pretty cool looking kit. Yeah. Um, we've had a couple of those in, in the store and they, they look really cool. And um, they don't necessarily play that great, but it's just the whole visual aspect that makes it feel... It still makes it feel good, even though by itself it's not really anything special. It's actually, um, I'm pretty sure it's actually just an Alesis DM10, but just rebranded, made red, and they call it the Red Box instead of uh, the Alesis DM10. Um, so all the sounds are fairly similar. So sounds aren't really that great, but it's just the the visual aspect of having a real kit in front of you, and it just feels more real. So it's yeah. it's pretty pretty cool. And if you wanted to, you could put acoustic heads on there. And, and you can put acoustic it. heads on there, and I think they're also selling the the electronic pads just as is that you can put on your Ah, cool. Now. Cool. Yeah. Very Pretty cool. cool. Um, now, here's a question here from Scott A. It says, Roland specific, how tight are your V drum heads? Thanks. He has a TD15. I like to keep them, I, I like it fairly tight on the snare, um, as long as it's not doing any work for me. Um, I like the higher toms um, tuned a little bit down from the snare because you want, it, you want it to feel real. And I like the, the floor tom actually fairly loose. These are actually fairly tight, they're just stock. I haven't actually. Uh, uh, loosen them yet, but um, but normally I, I try to recreate uh, the the tension of an acoustic kit. So pretty tight for the snare because I like a tight snare. If you like a loose snare, go go loose. Tighter on the toms, fairly loose and and uh, and sloppy on the floor toms. Cool. Here's a question for both of us. This one's from Ryan the Lion ninety four. Says, what do you guys prefer, acoustic or electric? Um, I prefer acoustic just because it's you know. It's the age-old guy hitting a drum, like. But you need both. I feel you need both because you need one to be able to practice when no one wants you to practice, and then you need one to put on stage that looks totally badass that you can, you know, play on a mic up and, and do the real thing. So I, I think you need both. But if so, if I had a gun pointed to my head, I'd I'd go with the acoustic. Yes, I agree. I love the acoustic. Just 
textures and stuff that you can't really get out of yet, even with the supernatural feel. I told uh, the audio audio Victor in the back, I says, uh, I'm going to try and get this kit to surprise me and trick me into because I was just not going to look. I was just going to listen to the mix come through. I wanted to see if I could tell if it was an acoustic kit or an electric <laughs> kit, and I could still tell. But um, so there's still a lot of things that it can't do, um, little nuances that an electric or an acoustic kit could have. But I agree, it's great to have both. And One, one thing that you can do as well as you can mix and match. It's really common yeah. uh, these days for producers to bring in uh, an electronic kit like this and then use real cymbals because cymbals, uh, they really, really add to that feel of, of realness. Um, it's totally different from hitting rubber. Um, it's just, you know, that feels totally different. Uh, wood on metal versus wood on rubber. So mm -hmm. uh, mix and match, add toms to your... Uh, actually, some, some guys, some of my regular customers will actually have a electronic kit and have a real snare because they just like the feel of the real snare but everything else is electronic so well on the uh, uh, Transiberian Orchestra show that I went to I think it was John Riley I think of the drummer but he had all acoustic cymbals up there with the electric pads on the kit yeah. and I thought obviously it's because they have a whole orchestra there and the kit stage volume is too much but uh, yeah I've seen a lot of people that Mike McAlco's big huge drum kit that he has his monstrosity of a kit he's got electric pads on there as well yeah. um, Neil Peart if you look at his solo I mean he turns around he's got a rolling kit on there as well um, Ange says is it wise to put a patch pad on the kick mesh head me uh, sorry head it's not really gonna stick it, I mean it might I'd be, I'd be impressed if it did but you don't really need to do that as long as you're using proper beaters. We're actually using um, uh, specific Roland beaters uh, because if you use felt, it actually starts to eat away at the at the drum skin. Uh, no, oh, no joke. That's actually what happens. I, I didn't realize that for the longest time. So you would obviously recommend a plastic beater for any mesh head electric kit. Plastic or or wooden or or something that's not uh, spongy and, and porous like like felt because it actually does start to eat away. Uh, you can really notice this on on the uh, the rubber pads actually. Um, it actually starts to dig a groove in. It just er literally erodes it, but it, it'll do it on this pad too. So you don't really need the pad. Just use the proper beaters. Cool. Yeah. Every time I refresh this page, there's like another six, like six or seven questions. And right now there's 16 new ones that I haven't even looked at and we're still not even halfway done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a few more of these questions, guys. Um, obviously today's more of just a uh, Q&A almost around this electric kit. This whole week's lesson's gonna be on, on, on the electric drum. So if we don't get your question answered today, please come around for the next couple lessons because there's gonna be tons of time and opportunity to ask us. And during the week lessons, we make sure every question is answered. Um, also. I'd love for you to play us out too. Sure. Um, especially because I've only heard a little bit of this kit and I would just love to hear more of it. So let's go through a few more questions. Maybe you can play us out. Yeah. Sounds good? Absolutely. Okay, Xhammer says, could you review some different drum software packages maybe on a future lesson? You know what? Let's leave that one for a future lesson because I think... I'm going to work on getting one of these kits in here for, for uh, some future lessons as well because I think there's so much you can do and teach on this. And there's a lot of members out there that have electric drum sets. William Young says, when playing live, would you use the ambience from the kit or just the natural sound of the venue? Totally, yeah. Ambience would, would because some venues don't have any ambience. Some venues are just a hole in the wall. And so having the ambience is a plus. Like pe People will pay a lot of money to to add that to their their uh, their rack, their their whole sound setup so if it comes built in totally use it exactly mikey 2012 says can you use different parts from different uh, kits on each pad for example the 70 stair 70 snare on a stage bass drum or can you only have the presets set up um almost every almost every electronic kit comes with uh, a bunch of the presets and it usually comes with empty presets which you can create yourself but you can always go into the presets and totally uh mess around with the presets themselves and uh, change them up. So yeah, absolutely. You could have the awesomest kit ever if you wanted to, just from, if you choose all, all the best sounds in the brain. Mm -hmm. You don't need to stick to a 70s kit versus bop kit or, or whatever. Cool. Drumjack52 says, can you rec recommend a good monitor system for an e-kit? Uh, Roland comes up, or Roland has a, a pretty sweet system. I think it's called the, uh, there's so many, there's like the PM3, there's the PM10. One of them comes with a a bass unit and then also satellite speakers that pop up so you get the whole stereo sound. If you just use a keyboard amp, it's a lot cheaper and it works well, but it's only mono. And drums are a stereo instrument. You've got, mm -hmm. you know, left and right. It's, they're, they're almost like a surround instrument because you're literally surrounded by drums. So the, the satellite speakers are nice. You can also just use, um, like if you have a good home stereo system, you can use that too. You just might um, 
uh, blow it if you're if you're cranking the volume on there. Even or even uh, sorry to keep going, but even a a, a PA system. A PA system would be a, a great monitor system for for uh, an electronic drum set, and then you can crank it and make it as loud as a real kit. Shiri 2s work as well. They do. That's, that's, what, we're using. that's what I use. Uh, this one's from Noodle. It says, hey, Sean and Dave, great job on the lesson. Thanks, man. I have an acoustic kit, but I was thinking of adding some electric drums to it. Is this a good idea? We just were talking about that. It's a great idea. It is idea. a good idea. Yeah. Do just it. make sure everything's mixed well. That's the hardest part about it, I think, is making sure that what the people hear or what you hear is the same volume as your cymbal. If you have a yeah. crash cymbal and an electric cymbal and you hit one and then you hit the other and they can tell the difference, that's just not uniform and it's not going to sound well. It's going to no. sound like two different instruments. Another good way to, to go is um, uh, many brands, well, mainly Yamaha and, and Roland, have the, the these like multi-pads. So they'll have between nine and 12 uh, areas which are all different triggers so you can add that to your kit and you already have like basically a brain built in and you can add a couple more triggers to that so if you don't want to scatter them around your kit you have a little miniature electronic drum kit right here and then you can also add a few more pads around the kit as well and that's actually a fairly inexpensive way to go those start at like six or seven hundred bucks rather than buying a whole kit and adding that to your your acoustic kit awesome jk says would the cymbals break if you hit them as hard as you would an acoustic kit um in most cases, no. It depends, though. If you're really, really trying to break them, you can break them. Same with acoustic cymbals. So as long as you're hitting them properly and not just, like, yeah, destroying them, they'll, I've, they'll, I've they'll never, fine. I've seen more acoustic cymbals break than electric. I've never seen one of those kind of cymbals break. No. Um, but I have seen the cheaper models that have plastic and then some rubber pad. I've seen them lose their sensitivity. They, they will lose their sensitivity, and that's... That's if you're really beating them up, though. Um, mm -hmm. With an electronic drum set, you don't need to smash it to get sound out of it. No. And that's part of the process of an electric kit, learning to play it softer. And it actually really helps your dynamic level, too, when you realize that Definitely. playing on that. I mean, I watch you play acoustic kits, and uh, yeah, you use a lot of energy doing it, but you don't hit very hard. Um, and I think a lot of that's from your practice on an I, electric kit. I, I used to play really, really hard. I used to break things a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the, the acoustic the, or the, the electronic kit really kind of reins you in a little bit, which in most cases is good. Sometimes you, you, you want that extra burst of energy and you're just not used to, you know, expelling that. But in, in most cases, it's good because you don't want to be killing everyone or ki killing, killing everyone's ears uh, who's listening to your drum. Perfect. Okay, there's a, a lot more questions in here. We're going to have to get to those another time because we're running out of time here. But I do have one last one from um, Daniel J. Jones. He actually couldn't make it to this lesson, and he was really bummed about it, and he had some questions about... That's too uh, bad. He, he bought a TD-15. I know. Yeah. Nice kit. Uh, actually, he posted a video of him playing on it, too. Oh, nice. uh, anyway, the uh, questions that he had was, this is one that I think we've turned, uh, we've discussed already. Is there a way to turn the snare wires off on your snare drum on here? There is, yep. Pretty, pretty, pretty simple. I guess it would probably be in the same setting as when you're adjusting the tuning it's, and all that. It, it's in the strainer, so uh, we can even do that right now for fun, if I can find it real quickly here. Edit that. This is going to take too long, so we're not going to do sure, it. Sure, but, but, but it's, can it's, do it. it's possible, and you can do it with, uh, with most electronic drum sets. Okay, he says um, can't seem to find or can't find one. So I made a kit up with ten rototoms assigned to the snare. Kind of works. He <laughs> has a TD15, so I'm, I know it can work because I used to do it on the TD8, I, th I believe. Yeah. Um, so Daniel, I know it works. You just got to figure out how to do it. Is it okay to use wood tips, brushes, or roots on the kit? Uh, we were talking about brushes already. But yep. Th this kit um, will actually do brushes. It's okay on a on a TD15 and a TD11, uh, what have you. But it's it's not gonna um, pick it up as well as one that's meant to do it like the TD30. Cool. He has one last question, but it's way too in-depth. Mm -hmm. He says, this one might be a little bit too big to ask, but how do you trigger laptop MIDI sounds from your electric kit? And that's mm. like a, that's that's, a whole topic. Um, yeah, you, you YouTube it. Oh, yeah, you there you Google go. Google and YouTube it, because there's lots of tutorials. Yeah. And you do triggering with your bass drum, and you bring an actual a module when you yep. do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually, uh, who was it in the chat? Mondo? Somebody in one of our, uh, not in the chat, sorry, in the forums posted a video of him playing on one of the basic practice. Like, what's the absolute basic roll-in kit that has the two built-in pedals? The HD1 or it. the HD3, which just got released, yeah. 
Yeah, he was playing on that, but it, for some reason it sounded so good, and he was obviously um, <laughs> using uh, triggers or, or, or triggering it. But uh, anyway, Sean, you mind playing us out? Yeah, what should we do? Should we do a, uh, a built-in loop on here, or should we do a song? Uh, let's do a built-in loop on here, because cool. you do a lot of, you've done a lot of your um, uh, Seven Year Storm, mm -hmm. so let's try a loop on there. Have fun with it. Do whatever you want. Thanks again for coming out, everyone. Uh, for all who didn't get their answers or questions answered, please, if you're a member of Drum, you'll come around for the next lessons that we're doing this whole week on this electric kit. And it was a lot of fun um, uh, seeing how it sounds. Also, um, the Drumio forum as well. Hop on there. Mm -hmm. uh, ask, ask a question addressed to any one of us, and we'll get on there and answer it. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks again, Sean, and uh, good luck with the play-along. Thank you.